God bless you, saints of God. You all know what it is. We're out here, warriors for Christ. We're actually a single warrior for Christ uh, today. But we're out here in Jacksonville, San Marco, and we're going to be doing spiritual interviews, talking to people about what they think about spirituality and uh, who we are as human beings. What's the meaning of life? And we're going to be trying to use that as a springboard into the gospel. And uh, we're out here in front of the lions. Just like the scripture said, Jesus is the lion of Judah. And uh, so I think that's a really great tie-in. But let's, uh, let's see what the people have to say. Hey, how's it going, y'all? Do y'all have a second for a spiritual interview for YouTube? Uh, a spiritual, spiritual interview? interview. Yeah, sounds interesting, huh? Something spiritual. Okay. What's going on? So, so we're just asking people questions about like life and spirituality and to see what you think and, and kind of discuss these ideas. So I guess the first question would be, what would you say is the meaning of life? Um, I know that's a big question, huh? <laughs> the meaning of life. Yeah. I think that it is to live copacetically with everything, every sense okay. of being. Uh, what is uh, copacetically, you said? What, what would, how together would you define that? To help each other out, to, to reach each other and lift us up. Okay, so like to, to live in community. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Would you say that, that we've attained that or achieved that? No. No? In some places, yes, but most places, no. Okay. What would you say is, is the obstacle to that? Right now, a lot of it's politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you say that's the only thing? Or? No. I think it's also, it's, mm -hmm. everything all goes back to politics. Oh, what? <laughs> I lost him. Um... I think, I don't know, it feels like after the epidemic, a lot of people forgot how to live in communities. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's how it feels to me. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, I should have done this at first. What's your name? Tony. I'm Hudson. Hi, Hudson. Nice to meet you, Tony. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and I kind of, I feel that too. It seems like before the pandemic, you know, even people who disagreed, they were willing to talk with one another and, you know, yeah. and have that disagreement, but respectfully, but it seems like it's gone from that to just abject hatred. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really sad. <laughs> Yeah. But um, I'll share with you a perspective that I've found, and I found this in, in the Bible. I don't know what, you, what your thoughts are on the Bible, and I'd love to hear that. But the Bible talks about how all of us have this thing called sin. And because of it, it says that our hearts are deceitful above all else and desperately sick. And so all of us, even the best, we have kind of that stain that causes us to always have a tendency toward hatred, always have a tendency toward wanting to put ourselves first and put other people down. And it's kind of when that starts running more and more unrestrained like it seems it is today that's what causes you know society to, to become more hateful what, what are your thoughts on like the bible um i believe it's a wonderful piece of literature um i believe that jesus christ was indeed a person okay. um but i'm more of an eastern mm -hmm. kind of gal myself so does that make mm -hmm. sense yeah, so what would, like, how would you describe Eastern, I don't know, I guess theology, Eastern philosophy? Oh, I don't know. I can't describe it for everybody. I can tell you what it's like for me. Okay. Um, okay. It's a universal oneness, mm -hmm. um, a universal truth. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of universal truths. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I liken them to um, the commandments in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's really what makes us society is yeah. rules and regulations, but right. but that come moral rules mm -hmm. and regulations that come from within. Right. So would you say kind of like our, our pathway to I guess salvation, whatever salvation looks like, becoming the best that we can be or whatever it is, that our pathway to that is is by you know following the rules. That's it. when you said it. It makes it sound terrible. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, just having a moral compass. Okay. I, I, want, I want to share with you again kind of the perspective that I, I found in the Bible, which I think is very, I, I believe it's the truth. Um, kind of like I shared earlier, we all have that stain of sin. And it's like, you know, God gave us his rules, which are good, you know, and, and you actually see reflections of those everywhere else. Like the golden rule it's actually, you find it in every other religion too. Yes. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Absolutely. So it's like, there, this truth is sprinkled everywhere. But 
it's like, I don't know if you've ever had this experience. I certainly have. You know, I want to do that. I try to do that. And maybe I do it good for a couple of days. Maybe I do it good for a couple of weeks, but inevitably I fail. And so kind of the, the good news that the Bible brings us is that Jesus came, right? He was a, he was a wonderful teacher, but he was much more than that. Yeah. Because he went and gave his life to, to, to take the punishment that we deserve for all, of, all the times we've broken those rules, but also to give us the opportunity to be reborn. Oh, I, I'm, I'm baptized and um, went through confirmation in my church. So okay. What, what church do you go to? Uh, Arlington Congregational. Okay. I'm not familiar with that, but... It's ever off of um, universities over in that area. But I, um, that's my church of choice for years. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So do you know what it, it means to be born again? Yes. Okay. How would, how would you describe that? Well, it's almost clean slate, Mm -hmm. Um, forgiveness for self and from God, and your opportunity to shine, your opportunity to do better or different than you did prior to being baptized or born again. Yeah, absolutely. So... Kind of what, like, like we were talking about earlier, we all have, you know, a heart that is, is corrupted by sin. Our hearts are deceitful above all else. And actually says in Ephesians 2, we're dead in our sin. And that, that's why we can't get out of it. That's why society can't escape it. But because Jesus died for us, and he offers us, number one, forgiveness. Number two, a restored relationship with God. And he allows God's Holy Spirit to come inside of us. And actually allow us to no longer be stuck in sin, no longer be dead. He makes us alive. That's what being born again is. It's not only a clean slate. It's also the start of a new life with God. Okay. And so when we have God's Holy Spirit in us, we're no longer dead in sin. We're no longer, we, he, it says he takes away our heart of stone and gives us a heart of flesh. And so now we can, you know, there's no one perfect, but we can escape those old habits. We can start truly loving one another, start truly, you know, serving other people. And, um, and living for him instead of for ourselves. And, and when that happens, you see, you know, and the, the church has failed to do that throughout history. I don't know if you've ever studied. There's been a lot of violence in the name of oh. religion, but whenever that happens, it's always people who have missed that point, missed the true point of the good news, which is, which is the news about what Jesus did for us, that it's not about control. It's not about, uh, although in, in a sense it is about you know, Jesus Christ is coming back to rule the whole world. The scripture is clear about that. But, but it's about going out and spreading that message of love to people and giving them the opportunity to repent of their sins and come to the truth. Thank you very much. I'm burning up. I'm gonna oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice to meet you. And we, we, we put content on YouTube. Is that okay with you? Yeah, thank yeah, you. God bless you. God bless Have a good one. And also, I just want to say we really covet you guys' prayers um, because... Apart from Jesus Christ, apart from abiding in Him, apart from His Holy Spirit working through this ministry, we can do nothing. We can go out here and, and try in our own strength all day long to win people for the gospel, and nothing's going to happen because it's only by the power of God that, that, that sinners are saved, that people are drawn to Christ. Jesus said, no one can come to me except that the Father draws him. And so we really just covet your prayers, that you would pray for us individually, that Lord would sustain us, keep us strong, give us more opportunities to spread the gospel, but also that you pray for all the people who are going to hear this message, that the Lord would draw them, that he would convict their hearts of their sin, and that by the Holy Spirit, he would give them new life, open their eyes to see the truth, and to bring them to take that step to put their faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's one of the main ways that you can support this ministry. We we usually don't accept donations. Um, we, we are self-funded. We're self-supported. Um, we don't need uh, resources at this time. The main thing that we need is your prayers, that God would move in these streets, that God would move in Jacksonville to save and redeem the lost. We just had a really great interview with um, a, a couple who stopped by and, and spoke with me. Um, really good conversation. Um, and uh, I hope, I don't know how much I got on, on film, but when I came back to the camera, it was shut off. I don't know what's going on. I think it's just overheating. I'm out here with Brother Josh, who uh, 
just came out to join us for the, the mission today. And uh, we're over here in San Marco. We walked out to the river where people are usually fishing. And uh, as you can see, um, the fields are empty. <laughs> so uh, we were hoping to come out here and do some more spiritual interviews, but we're gonna walk back over to San Marco proper now and, um, and try to talk to some more people out there and then, and then we'll start preaching. Nice to meet y'all. Nice to meet you. So the, the first question, and, and this is kind of a hard question, or maybe not, but what is the meaning of life? What do you think it's all about? Why are we here? Um, Starting out with the tough ones. Yeah. Um, we got to think on this a little bit. Meaning of life is to forge relationships and be happy, even though that's very subjective. And, and I say, like, leave the earth a better place. Like, do better. That was better. Yeah. No, no, it was in conjunction. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, so kind of twofold, like relationship and making the world better. Yeah. How, how would you define better? Like, like, what does it look like to make the world better? To make the world better? Um, less pollution, less trash, better people, less crime. Um, honestly, like just connecting with everyone and supporting mm -hmm. everyone and what they do. Um, I think people hate on a lot of things that doesn't really need to be done. So I think yeah. like just like supporting everyone for what they do and like, cheering them on even if like you don't think it's their best and like you, like you know it doesn't match to yourself but as long as it makes them happy and it doesn't deteriorate anyone why not yeah using your life to make other people feel good about themselves and and be happy with themselves and not tearing people down yeah so how how do you think we as society have have done do you think we've achieved that no not one bit. I'm not even close. Okay. No. Unfortunately. I think there's a lot, lot to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's unfortunate too that a lot of the negativity gets highlighted more than the positivity. So, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. What would you say is the greatest obstacle to that? I think people just have to become more open mindedness, and you can't really force someone to do that. So, if people are like, like use or they don't even have like the resources too so say in like other states i know they don't have like recycling or compost right. or stuff like that and like they don't they don't have the opportunity to even do it so like that in that kind of realm i don't think yeah um, i think there's a lot of intersecting factors like uh, economic or socioeconomic factors you know people who are lower socioeconomic status have a hard time you know keeping up with like the recycling and the, yeah. the environmental stuff um and yeah, I mean, if you put Jacksonville in perspective, there's so many different areas. So if you go to one area, they have way more right, opportunities, right. way more advantages. And if you just go even like a few blocks over, they don't have mm -hmm. that. And like Jacksonville is a whole transportation town. So if you don't have your own vehicle or you can't get to like a bus stop, you're kind of out of luck. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think the media has a lot to do, too, with like the negativity. Um, media is important to like share perspective, but I think it also makes can make negativity more widespread because right, everyone's right. plugging into the media and yeah stuff. yeah absolutely so like let, let me kind of share a perspective an insight that i kind of feel like i have into that too so like i think a lot of it comes down to selfishness right like i watched yeah. uh, i was behind a, a guy the other day at a stoplight and he opens the door of his car and a bunch of garbage comes out and then he drives off and uh, it's when someone does that, you know, all they're thinking about is themselves. Yeah. You know, they're not thinking about the people who are going to have to look at that, the people who are going to pick that up. They're not thinking about the way it's just trashing the world. They're just thinking about themselves. But kind of a perspective that that comes from the Bible, which I don't know you guys thoughts on. I'd love to hear that. But is that the reason that we all kind of have a bent towards selfishness? Like I wouldn't consider myself a selfish person, but if I'm honest with myself, I really am. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. if we all are honest with ourselves, we, we have that bent towards selfishness. Yeah. And what the Bible says is that that is because our hearts are sick. It says in uh, the book of Jeremiah that our hearts are deceitful above all else and desperately sick. And we can't even understand what we do sometimes. What do you guys think is the solution to that kind of problem? Oh, gosh. Well, no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you have to just become more self-aware. And mm -hmm. when people tell you, like, hey, just so you know, you can do this or versus that, keep an open mind and be like, all right, next time, instead of just say like i mean like what we just picked off litter off the ground instead of walking past it right oh mm -hmm. that is an eyesore animals can eat it and get hurt like pick it up just throw it away and like you see little things people are going to notice you doing it and then people are going to keep that in their mind so i think like you just have to try to keep an open mind and like 
don't ridicule someone for doing right. it because that's going to make them want to do it more. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like openly try to hope, like, you know, like, hey, next time maybe do this or if you right. can't do that, let me help you. Stuff like that. And I think it also starts like in your home, like, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, parents like teaching their children good values about not being selfish and how to be helpful and, and you know, include people. And then it comes with like the teachers that in schools can also be that kind of guide for young children right. to develop those values, um, which is why the education system is so important. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, what, what, what uh, the Bible says the solution is, is, you know, if our heart is sick, we have to basically have a heart transplant. And it talks about that one place where it says, God says he'll um, take away our heart of stone, a heart that's sick, a heart that is bent towards selfishness and, and all the other vices. And he'll give us a heart of flesh, like an actual heart that is capable of thinking of other people but for ourselves. That's, it, it's bent is toward selflessness, which that's what, you know, love is actually about, is selflessness. It's putting other people's interests before yourself. And God says in, 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 in the Bible that, he allows that to happen through Jesus Christ. You guys know who Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I'm yeah. a bit. Um, I'm, I'm Catholic, so I okay. I grew up with that and did a lot of that in college. But so what what did Jesus come to do? To save us and take away our sins. Okay. How how did he accomplish that? By um, dying on the cross. Right. That's correct. So our sin is like. It's like crimes, basically. If you break the law, you're accountable to the law, and, and you can't be free from that unless you go to court and your, 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 your crime is taken care of. In the same way, when we sin against God, it, it separates us from him and, and subjects us to his punishment unless that, that punishment is, is solved. And right. Jesus came to do that at the cross, so that when we believe in him, our sins are forgiven, we get, a, we get a blank slate. But more than that, our relationship with God is restored. Right. And that's kind of what life is all about. Like you said at the beginning, it's about relationship. God created us, it says, in His image. And God, you know, there's three persons of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but He's one God. He's like a community in Himself. And so He creates us in the same way for relationship. And He allows us to be kind of restored to that meaning of life through Jesus and to allow His Spirit to come inside of us to transform us. What do you guys think about that? Oh, I'm not religious, gosh. so I d don't believe in any of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't been practicing for a little while, so I'm like very rusty with all that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I definitely believe in that. Um, oh gosh, I don't really have anything to say about it though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I just haven't been like in that mindset for a while. So. That's all right. I kind of put you on the spot with that, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so Jesus, Jesus also said, um, just kind of encouragement for you, Jesus also said, you know, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So it's, it's kind of like the, the Catholic Church kind of has this teaching that basically the church dispenses God's grace to you. You know, you go, you, you take the Eucharist, you go to confession, and then you're good. We've actually met people who are, are, are out on the streets getting drunk, and they're like, that's all right because I'll be in church the next day. That's not how it works, though. God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to walk with him. And Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Not through a church. Not through a priest. Through Jesus. And so that doesn't mean church is unimportant. But right. it means that he's calling us to follow him. Right. And what would you say is your main, like, goes into your, you know, you're your not religious. Why? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I'm, yeah. I'm just curious. Um, I just think a lot of the belief systems and all that is, like, I don't know how to say it, like, yeah, man-made, portrayed, like, people want to follow some aspects, but not all aspects. Um, and that's met, certainly true. Yeah, and I met a lot of people who are like, well, my religion is the only religion, and, like, stuff like that, and, like, if you want to believe, in my mind, if that's going to make you feel better to, like, have a belief system, 100% go for it. Um... I think if you practice it correctly, I think it can do good, but I haven't seen a lot of good from it. Um, so, I don't know, I just, I don't think religion does a lot good for people other than right. for themselves, because then they know they're gonna go to heaven or hell when they die, but is there a heaven and hell? You yeah. know, so I think it's just a more of a comfort system for a lot of people, um, and a lot of people abuse it. So, yeah. I think it can be a, a walk around, like you said, like people say, oh, I'm gonna drink, then next day go to church, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of abuse, a lot of a lot of things like that. But I, I would I would leave you with this. I'm not going to press you on it. But my truth is that the moon is made of cheese. Is that true? Yes.
for it. You, no. Yeah, to sample it. Yeah, right, to sample exactly. It. Yeah. So, so, in other words, the reality is the moon is made of, I don't know, silica or whatever. I, I don't even know. But if someone says something contrary to that, they're just wrong. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we're spiritual beings, if there is a God, then there can only be one truth about him. If he's real, you know, if he's not real, mm -hmm. and this is all something we want to believe to, to feel good about ourselves, you know, it doesn't matter. But you know, if that's the case, then I'd rather know there's not a God. I'd rather believe in what's true if that were yeah. true. So you know, the question becomes, what is true? How do we figure out? You know, there's a lot of contrary truth claims in the world when it comes to God. How do we know? Which is true? I think that's just the old age question that no one knows. Yeah, um, yeah I don't think there's you're ever going to find out until you die and it might be nothing it might be something no one knows mm -hmm. um, yeah mm -hmm. and it, you know with there being so many religions it is you know, some people have got things that help them believe more like speaking for myself like the Catholic Church there's a lot of miracles that have been documented and that is one thing that just kind of helps me believe in it but I know a lot of other people say oh those can be explained away which might be true but yeah. There are some stuff that you can't yeah. explain. Some things are just not explicable. Yeah. And they're inexplicable. And yeah, just for me personally, that does kind of help me with I know that not every religion has things like that. Yeah, and if you go to, I think for me it really hinges the question of what, what is the truth. Mm -hmm. It really hinges on the Bible. If the Bible is what it says it is, then we can trust it. If not, then you know, we don't have any to trust it in the other book. But exactly. when you look at like the, the, the reliability of Bible, all the manuscripts we have from, you know, all the way back to the first century. We know that what we have today is, is the same thing the apostles wrote down. And With all the translations, I'm not sure on that. Yeah, so so it wasn't in English when it was made, you know? So they could, there could be a ton lost in translation. Right, yeah, so the, the Old Testament of the Bible is written in Hebrew, right? The New, Testament, New Testament is written in Greek. Mm -hmm. And the the translations we have today are translated directly out of the Greek and the So. There, there was a time when, you know, they had the Latin translation of the Vulgate, and then they translate that. You know, you translate, and then translate, and translate, you lose things. But what we have today are reliable manuscripts from all the way back to the first century. Mm -hmm. And we translate those directly out of Greek into English. So there's, obviously, if you read it in Greek, you get more, more, um, it'd be easier to understand exactly what they're talking about, because mm -hmm. language is contextual, right? Mm -hmm. You have idioms in English that wouldn't translate to other languages. Right. But... We, we have a very high uh, degree of certainty about what we're reading in English is what they really got So, and if what it says about Jesus is true, so it's reasonable to believe it is, then he is So that would just be my version of the thing about that. Oh, so the one thing, and although I am Christian, like having other religions have books, like the Mormon right. faith has the tablets, so it's like, whose book is right? Right. And I, like I said, I'm I am Catholic. I believe in God and Jesus, but like, it's hard sometimes to contextualize it. And like, mm -hmm. well, all these other religions have books too. And like, what's to say they're not right? Right. But yeah, it's. Yeah. And who's to say? I mean, in all honesty, if there is a God, is there really one God? I mean, there could be a higher being. All in all in all. Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome! Thank you guys for mm -hmm. talking. Of course.